DJ Cannon with Seton Hill University here with Figure It Out Baseball. Uh, in this video, I'll go through some mobility exercises that uh, we take our pitchers through here at Seton Hill. Uh, mobility is a big factor in what we're trying to incorporate with all of our pitchers. Having mobility, especially in three main areas, uh, our hips, our thoracic spine, which is the middle of your back, and then shoulder mobility. Uh, those are three areas that pitchers tend to lose a lot of flexibility as they go throughout a season, uh, just with the wear and tear of, of pitching, trying to uh, negate the loss of flexibility in those areas, uh, hopefully helps our guys to avoid injuries. Um, and I think a little bit of it can help them to uh, increase their mobility where they can now add some velocity uh, to their pitches. So uh, I'll take you through a few different exercises that we'll go through. Uh, and these would be uh, pre-throwing exercises that we would do every day. Uh, occasionally we'll also add some of this into a post-throw. Um, but this is something before we ever touch a band or a baseball, all of our pitchers will go through some of this mobility uh, just to get their bodies primed and ready, make sure they're, they're loose and flexible to start throwing. In a team practice, we'll start off by going through a full team active warm-up uh, with some active stretching. Uh, and then we'll break off positionally where now our pitchers will start to do uh, some of this mobility uh, work uh, as part of their pre-throwing routine. Tyler here is going to demonstrate some of these exercises. Uh, this first one is a lying knee to knee stretch. So he's lying on his back kind of like a sit up position. His feet are going to be outside of shoulder width. And he's going to try to drive his knees in together, trying to touch his knees. Uh, working on some internal uh, rotation flexibility in his hips. He's going to hold that internal stretch for like a two, three second count, and then he'll release, and he'll do about five of those. Depending on the day, if the guy's maybe a little bit uh, extra tight, might have him do a few extra reps just to get them loose, uh, but typically around five is where guys will live. Uh, the second exercise, uh, he'll go up onto all fours here. Um, we call these our fire hydrant stretches. So he's going to start uh, one leg at a time here. He's going to lift out to the side to start. So he's got his left leg going out to the side, keeping his hips squared to the ground so he's not rolling and favoring to one side, uh, trying to work some external flexibility into that hip. He'll do like five or six to the side like that, and then he'll move on, go straight behind. When he's doing this, again, he wants to try to keep his back flat. Notice how his head is neutral. His chin isn't sagging forward or looking straight up. He's keeping his knee bent, so he's lifting from his hip, uh, working kind of some glute strength, glute activation as well uh, with this exercise. Again, he'll do like five or six on each side, and then he'll move on to the final phase of our fire hydrants, where he'll lift his leg out to the side, and then draw a circle straight back, kind of blending those two, uh, those first two together, trying to create as big of a circle with his knee as he can. Again, same cues where he's trying to keep his back flat, hips squared to the ground, head neutral with his spine, and just trying to make a big circle, activating those hips, loosening those up. The next exercise here, he's going to shift to a seated position going with our seated 90-90 progression. So he's gonna have a 90 degree angle at his right knee, 90 degree angle at his left knee, uh, with a little space between here. He's gonna take his chest to his right knee here to start. He's gonna hold that for about 15 seconds or so, just trying to feel a good external stretch onto that hip. And then he'll sit back, uh, trying to keep his body straight up and down here and try to feel a good internal rotation stretch on the left leg. So he'll feel that kind of inside the hip, hold that again for about 15 seconds or so. And then the next progression with our 90-90 stretch, we're gonna work on moving our hips internally, externally. So he's just gonna have his hands bracing on the ground, trying to keep his torso upright as much as possible and swing those hips back and forth. Trying to keep good space in between his, his feet, trying to work back and forth from that 90-90 position side to side. And then his final progression, he can lift his hands 
Uh, this is a lot more challenging. Uh, Got to use a little bit of core stability with this exercise as he swings his hips back and forth. So that first progression just kind of works some flexibility, opening up some of that mobility. And then as he swings side to side, a little bit more dynamic of a movement where he can kind of activate and warm up those hips a little bit more. Next, we're going to go to a uh, thoracic spine exercise, T-spine. So he's on all fours again here. He's going to put one hand behind his head and he's going to reach across his body as far as he can with that elbow and then open up as tall as he can. Ideally, he's going to get this elbow straight up and down with his opposite hand. If he's not able to get there, that's okay. Just trying to rotate as far as he can. Uh, trying to focus that rotation from the middle of his back here, from that thoracic spine, and making sure he's not rotating from his lower back. Uh, if, if he's trying to rotate from his lower back, he'll kind of feel as if he's trying to crack his back on a chair, that sort of feel. Uh, we're trying to avoid that so now he can just rotate from the spine. Um, being able to rotate in that area of his body can create a little bit better separation in his pitching delivery. So when a guy's in his stride phase, he can keep his hips and shoulders separated to kind of tighten that rubber band before he unleashes it to create a little bit more velocity. So that's what our main goal with this exercise would be. Uh, the last two exercises uh, will be shoulder activation. So we'll move over to the wall. Uh, wall angels. Uh, so the first exercise we call wall angels. He's going to be about a step away from the wall so he can sit into uh, a very short squat. He's going to keep his back completely flat against the wall here. Head stays against the wall. Arms out to the side. And he's going to draw his hands straight up. Trying to get up as high as he can with his hands there. Going nice and slow, making sure that he's not raising his shoulders into a shrug position. He's keeping his shoulders down here, just trying to rotate. So on his back, he'll feel his shoulder blade moving up and down, rather than his shoulder in the socket moving up and down. <clears throat> so now he's, he's able to stabilize that shoulder, create a little bit better flexibility that way. As you can see, he's getting overhead with that hand, just like he would be if he's trying to throw a baseball. So this is uh, working that mobility to make sure he's able to rotate to that position efficiently to avoid injury. Uh, the last progression here, he's now facing the wall. Again, about uh, maybe a step, half a step away from the wall with his feet. He's going to put his forearms flush against the wall here. Uh, his head is going to be neutral with his spine again. Uh, and he wants to make sure he's not pitching his shoulder blades here, so he's kind of rounding his back a little bit. And he's going to draw his arms straight up the wall as high as he can get, and then pull one straight back down. Again, making sure that his shoulders don't raise up into a shrug position, kind of stabilizing here, and making sure that these shoulder blades are rotating up into a healthy position for him to throw from. Uh, both of the wall angels in these wall slides uh, will be roughly six to eight reps. Again, uh, some guys might need a little bit more, a little bit less on a given day. Uh, as this is more of an activation, uh, most of the time, uh, it's kind of based off of feel for that specific athlete on that given day. Uh, but these progression of exercises, our pitchers will go through act after their active stretch, uh, make sure they, they get mobility in the necessary areas to help keep them healthy and hopefully help build some velocity in their pitching deliveries. Uh, and then they will progress into some pre-throwing drills uh, before they start throwing the baseball. So now their body's heated up, it's loose, and it's ready to go, uh, keeping them healthy and, and getting them ready to, to perform at the top of their abilities. Uh, again, this is DJ Cannon, uh, Seton Hill Baseball, here with Figure It Out Baseball, uh, going through some activation mobility exercises for our, our pitchers before they throw.